So now we're going to talk about families of quadratic functions. What does it mean to have a family? Oh, kind of a silly word for a math to be talking about families. But what they're talking about is, what if I had a, a parabola that went through this vertex here like this? How many other parabolas could I draw that also had a vertex of 0, 0? Well, you should be able to see that I can draw an infinite number of problems. Here would be one like this. It could be one going like this. It could be one going like this. And what is it that determines what the equation is going to be for these parabolas? And you should be able to tell me after all the work we've done so far with transformations and quadratics in grade 10 that it's all about A, the A value. Right? Whatever the A value is, that's going to determine the shape. So similarly, if I have, um, let's say I have two zeros, one here, one here. And I say, how many parabolas can I draw through these two points? And you could go like this, or you could make it really steep like this, or you could make it like this, or you could make it like this and then as I say to my class so it's like a big shark there are lots and lots of parabolas that can be drawn through these two zeros so again it's all about the a value now your job in this section is to find the equation of a parabola in maybe vertex form or in factored form if I give you the zeros and another point. So let's make up our own examples. I'm not even going to, uh, let's just make something up. So let's say I had um, a vertex, vertex of, let's use two and minus three. And in order for me to tell you the shape of this parabola, I would need to know something else, right? Because if, if I just told you the vertex, 1, 2, and minus 3, minus 1, 2, 3. So this is all I know. But all I need to know to find the equation of this parabola is one other point. Right? One other point. That's all. That's all I need. So if I gave you the 0, let's say I said this, this point, it goes through this point here, and that would be x is 4y, 0. So if I asked you to find me the equation of this parabola, you'd say, okay, well, I know the vertex and I know a point. So I have a point that is 4, 0. And because I have the vertex, then I'm going to use vertex form. Fancy that, eh? x minus h squared plus k. And this is my h and this is my k. And this is an x and this is a y. So I have h is 2, I have k is minus 3, I have x equals 4, and I have y equals 0. So I have everything I need for this equation except for the a. right? And that's what I'm going to solve for by just substituting in all of these values. So I'm going to say, well, 0 is going to be equal to a, my x was a 4, my h is a 2, I'm going to square it, and I'm going to add minus 3 or subtract 3. So 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So that's a times 4, or 4a. I have some people have trouble with that. This is all multiplied, right? So 4a, and I'm going to bring the 3 over here. So 3 is equal to 4a, so a is equal to 3 divided by 4. Don't say 4 thirds. Make sure you're careful with what you're dividing by. So if a is 3, three quarters, so now I can tell you the equation of that exact problem that I just pulled right out of my head. And there we go. There's my equation. Vertex was 2 minus 3. Don't forget when you plug it in, it has to be minus h. So minus the 2 gives me this equation. So that's how you would do find the equation for one in vertex form. Let's take a look at one if I had the zeros, so in factored form. 
And this time I'm going to use um, an example that's probably one of the hardest ones that you will have to do. And that's if they gave you that the zeros are 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3. So if those are my zeros and I need to know, um, I need to find the equation of something. So, so right now all I have is this, right? Let's make a quick sketch. So 2 plus the root of 3, the root of 3 is 1 and a bit. So let's say it's about here. So this is going to be my 2 plus root 3. And I'm right on the other side here. I'm going to have 2 minus root of 3. And for a point on the parabola, let's pick something that's out here. So let's say this is 2, let's go to 4. And let's say it's going to be 4 and 2. Did I use 4 and 2 before? No, I used 4 and 0. Okay, so this time it's going to be 4 and 2. So it's going to go through here, which means it's going to have a shape kind of like this, right? So your job is to find the A value. So you have to be given a point. You have to know a point. Or you have to know the y-intercept. So if I said the y-intercept was minus 1, then you'd say, oh, 0 minus 1. But I didn't give you that. We're going to use this point right here. So in factored form, and you need to know all these little forms, right? x minus s times x minus t. And my s is going to be 2 plus root 3. My t is going to be 2 minus root 3. My x is going to be 4. And my y is going to be equal to 2. So again, I have this little box of information that I'm going to plug in to this equation to solve for a. So again, this is a trickier one because I'm using a radical and it's a little exercise to expect that you should be able to do in grade 11 math. So let's try that. So I'm going to put a 2 here. 2 equals, I'm trying to solve for a. My x is 4. So 4 minus, now this is where you have to be careful because it's minus all of this. So I would recommend a square bracket here and then plug in 2 plus root 3 because you're going to have to simplify that. And I have another x is 4 and I'm subtracting t. So minus 2 minus root 3. Okay, Make sure you do that nice and neatly. Okay, so let's simplify this mess here because so I have 4 minus 2 is 2 minus root 3. I see how I did the minus to both of those. So I had 4 minus 2 minus root 3, and 4 minus 2 is 2. This time I have 4 minus 2 plus the root of 3. So 4 minus 2 is 2 plus root 3. Okay, so, so far it's looking really messy, and you're probably going, oh my god, I don't know how to do this. But you can, you can do it. You know how to expand this. It's not so hard. So let's leave the 2 here. We have our a, and I'm going to multiply these two binomials together. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times root 3 is plus 2 root 3. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 2 root 3. Oh, isn't that nice? They're just going to cancel out. And minus root 3 times plus root 3 is minus the root of 9. I'll leave it, leave it like that because you know that root of 9 is 3, I'm sure. So 2 equals a times, now remember I got rid of these, they added and subtracted away, and I'm going to have 4, this is gone, minus 3. So I get a is equal to 2. Oh, how easy was that? So that's not the end of it because you need to state the equation that goes through these two zeros, way up here, these two zeros, and this point. So in the end here, now I'm going to make a statement. So um, y is going to be equal to 2 times. And now I plug in my s and t. So I have x minus all this. So minus 2 minus root 3. And that's just fine. Don't be upset because it doesn't look really neat. And x minus 2 plus the root of 3. And there I found my a. And remember, when you state your equation at the end, you always keep in x's and y's, and you just find the other point. So that's pretty much all that's in this section.
Um, you did some of this in grade 10, so it's very, very simple, making sure you have your X's and Y's and a point, a vertex and a point, or you have zeros and a point. This would be one of the more difficult zeros kind of question where you have um, a, a radical in it. Makes it a little more difficult, but still within your grasp in grade 11. Okay, so that's 3.7. We have one more to do. 3.8 linear quadratic systems. You're going to find it easy. See you in the next lesson. Subscribe and please comment and like if you like it because it's a lot of work for me to do this for you and I'm hoping you're enjoying it. Bye.